Despite the lack of an overwhelming political drive, it looks like there are some genuinely positive signs. By the middle of this century, we could be entering a unique phase in human history. We could have a population which is levelling off and might even decrease. And this is the best news that the planet has had since agriculture, large-scale agriculture, was invented 10,000 years ago. Because all that time we've had this inexorable rise of population with a few setbacks like the Great Plague and all that kind of thing, but it's been this inexorable rise. And now, at this stage of history, the thing is levelling out. So we ought to be throwing our caps in the air and, and shouting for joy and saying, great, all we've got to do if we want to survive on this planet and don't want to wipe everything else out is devise agriculture that will feed 9 billion people. Now, that ought to be easy. Technically, that should be simple. And the reason it looks so difficult is, well, to put it simply, the world is run by idiots and gangsters who have no conception of this because they're fools and are actually basically trying not to feed people but to make as much money as possible. At the moment, we have 6.8 billion people, roughly. And according to the United Nations, one billion of them are underfed. Now, the logic of Malthus says, well, if we had a, few, mil, a billion people fewer, we'd be OK, wouldn't we? So, you know, we should be reducing our population. And if we had three billion people, well, we'd be able to feed them easily. But we also have this economy underpinning the whole thing, which says that the whole agriculture, the whole economy, has to be maximally competitive. It has to be trying to produce as much money as possible. And if you are plugged into a system or farming in a way that doesn't make as much money as possible, then you go to the wall. Now, the point about competition is that it's supposed to produce you know, a better world, you know, because it makes everybody work harder and all that kind of stuff. But the real point about competition is that it produces losers as well as winners. And the reality is that we have one billion people starving because we have a farming system which is designed to feed only about five and a half billion people. And the reason that we have that kind of farming system is because it's designed to make money and not designed to feed people. So however small the population was, if you had an, if you had an economy that demanded that farming should be designed to make money rather than feed people, a proportion would always starve. So population is a red herring. If you approached the question of feeding ourselves, which is the fundamental thing, as a question of biology... And if you just look at the demographic reality, which is a kind of demogra uh, a biological fact, we could easily cope with 9 billion people. We are never going to cope with 9 billion people so long as we're plugged into the neoliberal economy and to all these so-called experts who are going down the route of high-tech and all the rest of it. We're going to die if we go down that route, which we are doing. <laughs>